al lado de la mesa de registración. The bathrooms are located on the right for men and left for the women. Take a minute now to turn off or silence your cell phones. We ask to be respectful to one another. Clapping to recognize your leaders and guests is appropriate. We will clap for our candidates only if they commit to support our agenda. Remember, we never boo. We're here today with a set agenda based on hundreds of conversations and house meetings throughout our congregations and our communities. We have a select group of candidates. This is not an open forum. This is our issues agenda. Senior citizens and working families need help in repairing their homes. Leaky roofs, foundation issues, and electrical problem disqualify many families from weatherization programs and leaves them vulnerable to gentrification pressures. We need more owner-occupied rehabilitation funds to make those repairs. We ask the city to increase the federal CDBG home funds allocation to rehab to 4.9 million a year. Can I ask that you please pay attention? Thank you. And to appropriate half of roughly three million in the Housing Trust Public Facility Corporation for this project. Families with undocumented parents are facing problems because they don't have a U.S. ID. They are denied birth certificates for their U.S. born children and they are afraid to call the police to report crimes because they cannot identify themselves. We ask the city to create and issue a city identification card. When immigrants are deported, their U.S. citizen children are left vulnerable. We ask the city to support a legal defense fund to help these children and make sure that they have their legal protection they deserve. We are on a path to make San Antonio a living wage city. Thanks to our work, city workers now start at a minimum of $13.75 an hour. The next the next step is to make it $14.75 an hour. However, outsourced workers make as little as $7.25 an hour. We must require contractors to pay no less than $9.50 an hour, matching the county's policy. Our tax dollars should not go towards poverty wages for those employees. <laughs> Project Quest is now a line item on our city budget. Again, thanks to the work of COPS Metro and the support of the city council. A recent study found that Project Quest is the only workforce development program that has proven to lift people out of poverty and move them into the middle class. <laughs> we ask the city to increase its investment from $2 million to $2.5 million a year to take us from a low wage to a living wage city. <laughs> the, 
delegates and guests, this is our agenda for today. Stand and say yay to ratify it. And now, let's welcome our co-chairs for today's meeting. We call this meeting to order. Good afternoon and welcome to the COPS Metro Accountability Session with candidates for mayor and city council. My name is Melissa Cisak and I am a leader with the Congregation of Divine Providence and I will be co-chairing the assembly today. My name is Esmeralda Rodriguez. I'm a leader with St. Timothy Catholic Church and COPS Metro and Cubs Metro co-chair. I will also be co-chairing this meeting. Let's start the assembly by seeing who is here. Good afternoon. <coughs> I'm Sister... Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. My name is Sister Gabriella Lohan, and I'm a leader with the Holy Spirit Sisters, a member of Cops and Metro Alliance. And my name is Natalia Tovar. I'm a leader with St. Timothy Cops Metro. Yeah, that's woo. Let us see who's here today. When we call the members' names, stand up and remain standing. Our Lady of Guadalupe Church, West Side. <laughs> Project Quest. St. Bonaventure Catholic Church. Congregation of Divine Providence. First Unitarian Universalist Church. St. Saint, Saint Francis of Assisi Catholic Church. Daughters of Charity. Our Lady of, Our Lady of Guadalupe Elotes. Slow it down. Sacred Heart Catholic Church. St. Philip of Jesus Catholic Church. St. Margaret Mary Catholic Church. Holy Spirit Sisters. El Carmen Catholic Church. St. Leo's Catholic Church. <clears throat> Congregation of Divine Providence. Holy Redeemer Catholic Church. San Alfonso Catholic Church. The American Federation of Teachers. San Antonio Progressive Alliance. Macedonia Baptist Church. St. Timothy's Catholic Church. Present Presentation Sisters, San Antonio Alliance for Teachers. <clears throat> we, we also have several guest delegations. Our Lady of Good Shepherd, St. John Newman, St. Henry, St. Joseph South Sand, Oak Hills Presbyterian, MacArthur Park Lutheran, St. Clare, True Vine Church, University Presbyterian. 
we welcome everybody, especially our new guest delegations. Congratulations to all of us. I now invite Father Jimmy Drennan, pastor of St. Margaret Mary Catholic Church, to lead us in an opening prayer. We have more delegations. Okay, St. Bonaventure was not recognized. Give them a hand. <laughs> Neighborhood First Alliance. here, the community of churches from for social action San Antonio. <laughs> El Carmen. And now we invite Father Jimmy Drennan, pastor of St. Margaret Mary's Catholic Church, to lead us in an opening prayer. Let us bow our heads. Loving God, creator of our world and author of our life, we thank you for the opportunity to gather this day. Te damos gracias por este día y la oportunidad de unir por las causas de nuestra comunidad. Lord our God, we pray your blessing upon us, for we come to you in thanksgiving for inspiring us to unite our voices and to join our communities for the needs of all in the city of San Antonio. Lord, we pray that you inspire those seeking public office to listen, to listen to their constituents, to the people gathered here today, and to remember that in their future, they should seek not their own will, but the will of the people Lord our God, may we be united in all that we do. Allow the energy that is created this day to help transform the city of San Antonio and more than anything, the lives of all of its citizenry, from the north to the south, the east to the west, every member of our community. This we ask in your holy name, you who live and reign forever and ever. Thank you, Father Drennan. Remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. And now we invite Father Brian Christopher from Our Lady of Guadalupe to tell us why we are here today. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Father. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Sisters and brothers, are you here to get some work done today? Yes. I've got to tell you, this is a unique gathering of leaders from all over San Antonio. These community leaders, these voters from all over San Antonio, representing Compton Metro member institutions and guest delegations. This is unique. See, normally when political candidates during election season get together, what they're doing is they're sharing their vision for our communities, amen? They share their vision and maybe they even get together and they do some debating over it. What makes this gathering unique is that this is a chance for you and I to share our vision for our communities with our candidates, amen? amen. And this is our chance to hear from them about where they stand on our priorities. Amen? Amen? Now I hear that not everybody likes Cops Metro's method of inviting our candidates here and then inviting them to say yes or no on our specific priority. I hear some people say that that ain't proper or that's not polite. I'm not here to be polite. We're not here to be polite. We're here to be honest, right? And we're here to get some work done. There's too much at stake for us. There's too much at stake. And so I ask, our response to this is, how else do we get 
to make a judgment on the candidates who will best represent our community's interests. Are we going to decide on our candidates based on who makes the best speeches? No! Are we going to decide on our candidates based on who's the strongest debater among them? No. no, of course not. Or how about the fanciest website? Is that going to win our vote? No. Or how about the, the cleverest Twitter tweet? Is that going to? No, I don't think so. We're going we're gonna to make our decisions as voters based on where they stand on the issues that we care most about. And we prefer to get a straight answer. Yes or no. And that's it. Now, fortunately, most candidates do indeed prefer uh, to be face to face with their voters. Most candidates do indeed prefer to have this sort of intimate interaction. And we appreciate their willingness to be here with us. And for over 40 years, sisters and brothers, for over 40 years, candidates here in San Antonio have participated in this tradition of gathering here with us, with our member institutions and these guest institutions, to share where they are in terms of our priorities. This is a part of the culture of San Antonio, and I think that our political process is stronger for it. But let's be clear about one thing. This tradition of ours is only going to stay alive. It's only going to stay alive if you and you and you and you and you and you and me and all of us are willing to get out the vote after this assembly. This ain't it. We got a lot of work to do ahead of us between now and May 6th, so we got to commit to that. If we vote in response to a candidate's position on our agenda, they will continue to come in front of us and answer our questions. They will continue to come in front of us and decide and be able and admit publicly in front of all of us whether or not they share our priorities. My friends, this afternoon we are here to get your commitments on these issues. So thank you for being here with us. President Abraham Lincoln wrote, the legitimate object of government is not to do for the people what needs to be done, but which they cannot, by individual effort, do it all or do so well for themselves. COPS Metro leaders believe in our own ability and responsibility to pursue economic security. Our iron rule of organizing is never, ever do for someone what they can do for themselves. However, there are some things that we cannot do on our own, things like roads, affordable housing, and good schools. Our local government can and should promote economic prosperity for all. This is a deeply American belief in the tradition of Lincoln, who said it best. The government's job is to clear the path for its citizens to get ahead. Our issues agenda seeks to clear the way for economic prosperity. Some say the city's job is only to provide police and fire and fix potholes, but there is a much bigger role the city must play. Norton Garfinkel, in his book, The American Dream versus the Gospel of Wealth, proposes three questions to evaluate economic policy. Does it work? Is it fair? And will it sustain the democratic structure of our society? Nowadays, the focus is almost exclusively on the question of does it work at the expense of the other two. Pope Francis reminds us that the creation of wealth must always be at the service of the common good and not only for the benefit of a few. Evaluate a recent economic incentive by the city using these three questions. The peanut factory loft apartment complex was built a few years ago. It was built to provide affordable housing for students who attend the UTSA downtown campus, so they said. And in 2012, the city loaned $400,000 to the 210 Development Group with loan forgiveness if at least 30 of the apartments were rented to students. Let's put this deal to the test. First, did it work? In 2016, the 210 Development Group asked the city to weaken the terms of the loan because the rooms were too expensive and nobody signed up. Did it work? No. Second, was it fair? 
the monthly rent for a one bedroom unit was between $1,100 and $1,800. Is this affordable for a college student? No. Is this affordable for any of us? No. Third, will it sustain the democratic structure of our society? When people see that this is how the city government operates, is it any surprise that voter turnout is less than 12%? These same questions apply to improving the Alamo Dome, rebuilding the Convention Center, forgiving property taxes to businesses, and many other corporate subsidies. Here's a different kind of economic development. Project Quest began 25 years ago to provide job training to help people move out of poverty into local jobs that pay a living wage. Mark Elliott of the Economic Mobility Corporation performed a six-year study on the economic impact that Project Quest has had on both the individual participants as well as the city. The results were published this week. First question, does it work? To date, over 6,200 individuals have been served, of which 87% completed the program. The study revealed that within five years, there was a 100% return on investment in only five years. These types of returns are unheard of in other workforce development projects. <laughs> Second question, is it fair? Quest participants started the program making an average of $12,000 per year. Those who completed the, project, the program were making an average of $38,000 per year by the end of the study. Quest effectively moves people from poverty wages into the middle class. Third question, does it promote the democratic structure of the city? Look around, I invite you to look right over here. We have over 50 Quest participants and graduates actively participating in democracy today. Our agenda today gives us a glimpse into how the city of San Antonio can address the economic pressures our families are facing. Before we move into these stories, we would like to recognize Sacred Heart Church as a member institution. This was neglected at the beginning. Sacred Heart, thank you. We are now going to hear from some of these families. My name is Elsa Menchaca. I am from St. Alfonso Catholic Church. <laughs> Sixty years ago, my parents moved into their home on the west side. They created a great life for my four siblings and me. They instilled the values of hard work and service to my community. Growing up, my house was beautiful. My parents took pride in their home. Then my mom died, and my dad was in a fixed income. He no longer had financial ability to maintain that house. Over the years, the house slowly started deteriorating. The roof leaks, leading to expensive water damage. The foundation needs major work. It is not the home that I grew up in. My dad is 92 years old. He is a World War II veteran and retired from Kelly Air Force Base. He was a hardworking taxpayer all of his life. Yet, when he needed help, there were no funds for him. My father's not alone. When I drive the West Side, too many homes are like my father's. But this is not a West Side problem, nor is it a South Side, East Side, North Side problem. It is the San Antonio problem. <laughs> too long, it is, for too long, we've invested in tax abatements for developers at the expense of our tax-paying citizens, like my dad. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jessica Guardado from South San Antonio High School and a member of St. Bonaventure's Catholic Church. Yeah. 
Earlier this year, I received the opportunity to travel to Europe through my Upward Bound teacher to live what I am learning in my Spanish 5 AP class. To travel outside the country, I needed to obtain my birth certificate to get a passport. When my mom and I went to get my birth certificate, we were denied it because my mom did not have an ID from the United States. I was, sh I was shocked that I was denied access to my own birth certificate as a citizen of the United States. I was embarrassed and so was my mom. The country I called home treated me like I was an outsider. I am one of the lucky few because my father was able to come with me and get it. But if I had missed out on this opportunity because my mother did not have a form of US identification, unfortunately, I have spoken with many parents of in our churches and schools who are still being denied access to the children's birth certificates. Thank you. Hello. Hello, my name is Mark Baru. And I'm a graduate of the 2015 Project Quest IT training. I had an excellent job working for as an IBM contractor with AT&T. In 2008, at the height of the recession, I was laid off. I found that in the new environment, new economic situation, that my skills were outdated and I was a little too old for that particular position. My job search continued until 2015. I struggled. But in 2015, I enrolled in the Rackspace Open Cloud Academy with help from Project Quest. Today, I'm now working at Accenture in a new role as a software tester with a new set of skills and a new opportunity. There is no doubt that the skills I obtained from that training had a direct impact on my hiring at Accenture. And today I'm now making more than $40,000 a year. Thank you. Thank you, Project Quest, and God bless you. hear from our candidates. We have 750 pe people here ready to hear your commitment. We have a timekeeper. His name is John Pawlowski, right there. <laughs> candidates, you must respond yes or no to each question. After you respond to all the questions, mayoral candidates, you have two minutes to give or to elaborate. Council district candidates, you have 30 seconds to elaborate. When you see the yellow card, that means you have 10 seconds to finish your remarks. When you see the red card, that means you stop. I will now review the questions we have for you. And our audience, you have those in back of your agenda. On housing, do you commit to increase the city investment in owner-occupied rehab to 4.9 million through the CDBG home funds and 1.5 million through the Housing Trust Board. On immigration, do you commit to create a citywide municipal ID for all San Antonio residents and a legal defense fund to citizen children who have lost their parents to deportation? On economic security, do you commit 
to raise the city's minimum wage for city workers to $14.75 an hour, for contract workers to $9.50 an hour, and raise the city's investment in Quest to $2.5 million. We will start with the mayoral candidates. Will you please stop, uh, go ahead and stand up and step forward? Councilman Nirenberg, please respond yes or no to all of the questions. On housing? Yes. Is that to, is that to both parts of the question, sir? Yes. On immigration? Yes. On economic security? Yes. You now have two minutes to elaborate. I believe that San Antonio can be a great city, but it can only be great if we have compassion for the people who live here. It should be people first as we grow. Whether you are an immigrant, regardless of your immigration status, regardless of your sexual orientation, regardless of the work that you labor to do, regardless of what side of town you live on, this city should treat you with respect. As mayor, that will be my guiding principle on housing, on transportation, on public safety, on every issue that impacts our communities. My guiding light as a city councilman in District 8 for four years and my guiding principle as a father and as a husband and as your next mayor will be that a city that you deserve is a city that treats you and your family with respect. Please vote for me. This is what I will deliver to you. Mr. Medina, please respond yes or no to all of the questions. On housing? Yes. Is that to both sets of the question? Correct. On immigration? Yes. On economic security? Yes. You now have two minutes to elaborate. Thank you. This election to me is more than just a campaign. It's a statement and it's a movement. It's a movement by people coming together to challenge the status quo at City Hall. For the last hundred years, every single mayor has been elected by the Chamber of Commerce's money. Well, I'm self-funding my campaign because, ladies and gentlemen, I will be the people's mayor of San Antonio. And this is very personal to me as the issue of immigration is to many of y'all here today. Because I like to say that I was born on the south side, maybe a little further south than most in a little place called Mexico. <laughs> but at the age of three, my mom and I crossed the border. Maybe we swam a little bit into McAllen. Then came here to San Antonio, to El Paso, Los Angeles, and then made our way back. And I didn't know I was undocumented. All I knew is I grew up with an American, speaking English, pledging allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and singing the Star Spangled Banner. Well, until I was 17, when my friend said, let's go to Mexico, and I was all excited. I told my mom, I'm going to Mexico this weekend. She looked at me and said, no, you're not. <laughs> I told her, why not? Well, she sat me down, told me why, and I wasn't going to Mexico that weekend. But bottom line is, I saw how immigrant families, whether they were from Asia, Africa, Europe, or Latin America, how their parents struggled. They picked the crops cleaned the babies, mowed the lawns, but I've also seen how they've raised the next generation of Americans, today's doctors, engineers, architects, and why not the next mayor of the city of San Antonio? Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Taylor was invited and she committed to be here. I was in the room when she said so. As you can see, she's not here. We don't boo, we don't boo. However, since she's not here, she will not know, we will not know where she stands on these important issues. We will now take the District 2 candidates.
Okay, Councilman Warwick. Councilman Warwick, before you answer yes or no to the wages question, I have to remind you, oh, excuse me, I'm not loud enough. Okay, Councilman Warwick, before you answer yes or no to the wages question, I must remind you that you answered yes in Holy Redeemer Church, and you said no at the B session in City Hall. But I still voted yes, sister. Yes, I know you did. That is <laughs> <Okay>. correct. <laughs> Votes more than words, right? Is this yes? Yes. Okay. okay. Well, be sure today that you say what you mean. Yes, sir. Okay. The questions are, we have three questions which you've got. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, thank you. You have 30 seconds to elaborate. How are you doing, Holy Redeemer? How's everybody else doing? I'm Alan Wark. I'm city councilman for District 2, and I'm just glad to be here today to, one, listen to the concerns of Project Quest that aren't just Eastside concerns. They are citywide concerns, and I see the entire city here representing and, and, and showing that these are important to them, so they are now important to me, the concerns that I didn't know about for today, because some of these things are new to me. Uh, the citywide uh, or city-issued ID. Thank you, ID. Mr. Wark. Oh, that's, that's it? Oh, Thank that's you. Quick. 30 seconds is very fast. Pass. Have a great day. Viva Fiesta. Thank you, Councilman Morick. Mr. Keith Tony, please. <clears throat> Mr. Keith Tony, you know the issues. Mr. Keith Tony, you know the issues. Housing, immigration, and economic development. Yes, yes, yes. You now have 30 minutes to get... <laughs> Get comfortable. I cannot help it. You have 30 seconds, Mr. Tony. <laughs> All right. When I was on city council, sister came to me and said Project Quest needed an additional $100,000. We didn't get her $100,000. We got her $200,000. <laughs> we went to Cheryl Scully and said, Cheryl, you and I both know you can do it. Get it done. I won't say one thing and do another. Why would I do that? It doesn't make sense. It should send a message to you. I'll say what I mean. I'll mean what I say. I'm Keith Tony. I hope you'll vote for me. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cruz Shaw, please come forward. You know the, the issues. Please respond to them. Yes, 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 yes. We'll yes. see. We will. You have 30 seconds to Pre elaborate. Friends, friends and family, my name is William Crushaw, and I'm just a public servant. I'm here for you all. I want you to ensure that your voices are to be heard. City Council works for you, not the other way around. I'm here to be a dedicated public servant to meet your needs, sit down and talk, answer your phone calls. You are the boss. It's not the other way around. When you make a phone call, we will call you back. When you reach out to us, we will return with in every effort we can to make sure that all your messages are addressed. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. Shaw. <laughs> Ms. Story Brown, you've been apprised of the issues. Please give us your response. Yes, see, yes, see, yes. <laughs> you, you now have 30 seconds to elaborate. I'm here truly to serve the people, not for the people to serve me. And looking at these issues and the questions they gave us, economics is truly an, uh, an issue. As a single parent who gets no other benefits, no child support, I know how important it is to have the right income that I can provide for my child and to provide a home for him as well. So I understand about the housing and wanting to be able to keep your home um, fixed up so that you can have a nice roof over your head. And when it comes to the point of immigration, my previous marriage, I was a Rodriguez. Thank you, your my time My father-in-law was an immigrant. Thank you, District 2. My name is, Nim my name is Nimfa Cantu. I'm from Sacred Heart Church, and I represent District 1. And I would like all the District 1 to come up, please. Now, you have heard the questions. You, I would like for you to answer yes or no. First of all, Mr. Fas Mr. 
Farias. 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 Mr. Farias. Farias. They say Farias, Farias. 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah. Other yeah. questions? Sí, 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 sí. Sí, sí, y sí, y sí se puede. Okay, you have 30 seconds to elaborate. My name is Robert Feria. I'm a labor and community organizer for seven years. I'm the only working class candidate running in District 1 here. I believe that workers' rights are human rights. I believe that immigrants' rights are human rights. I believe that housing justice is social justice. And I believe if we want to change in this city, we need working class people running for city council I will be an advocate for you, but I want you there alongside me every step of the way. That's why I say we must empower people first. Vote for me. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Mr. Montano, the questions, please. On immigration, housing. The answer to all of the questions is a very proud yes. Yes. You want to say six times? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'll say it five yes. more times if you want. 30 seconds to elaborate, please. Sure. Thank you for having me. My name is Michael Montano, candidate for City Council in District 1. I stand before you as a proud graduate of 16 years of Catholic education right here in San Antonio. I grew up on the South Side, and I'm so proud to see so many of my fellow San Antonians here today. On immigration, I helped invent the very first municipal ID card in the country, and I intend to bring that here to San Antonio. And on housing, it's not just enough to help repair homes. You also deserve tax abatements on your home so you don't get pushed out by developers who want to come in and change your neighborhood. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Vote Thank for me. Thank you. Councilman Trevino, on the question of immigration, housing, and economic security, yes or no? Yes, yes, and yes. You have 30 seconds, sir, to elaborate. Uh, I'm Roberto Trevino. I'm your city councilman. Uh, one of the very, very big issues that, that was on that very list about uh, the housing, you know that one of the uh, uh, innovative programs that we started in District 1 called San Antonio Under One Roof is being expanded. We helped to create that very initiative, and it's being expanded tomorrow. We, sh we will be announcing it through a per joint press release with CPS that we're expanding that through a rebate program as well because it's important, as the, the name of the program says, we're all in it together, San Antonio Under One Roof, and I'm proud, proud to serve Thank you, as sir. your counselor. Thank you. My name is Gloria Mora, and I am from St. Leo the Great Catholic Church, Cops Metro. I also live in District 3. I now invite the candidates for District 3 to step forward, please. Mr. Durham will be first there. Mr. Durham, you heard the questions already on housing and immigration and economic development. Would you please answer yes or no to all the questions? My answer to the first question regards to both questions is yes. My answer to the second question regarding immigration is yes. And my answer to the third question in regards to the wage is yes. Thank you. Well, you have 30 seconds now to elaborate. On Hello, answer. everyone. God is good? All and all the time? God is my name is Jerome Dunn. I'm running for City Council in District 3. Folks, I want to address two things in my 30 seconds. The first thing is a $15 minimum wage is not a minimum wage. That is a livable wage. That is the wage that we deserve as constituents in San Antonio. The second thing is your elected officials should represent you and protect you. If that means San Antonio needs to become a sanctuary city and issue municipalities for its residents that are currently here, then that's what needs to happen. My name is Jerome Durham. Thank and I'm you, Mr. For Durham. City Council in District 3. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Durham. Ms. Jessica Guerrero. Buenas tardes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, my answer to all three questions is yes. Thank you. You have 30 seconds to elaborate. Gracias. Buenas tardes. My name is Jessica O. Guerrero, and I'm running for District 3 because I want to fill the gap between our communities, our voices, our perspectives, and City Hall. I want to make sure that all of our perspectives are respected at City Hall and that our views 
are taken into consideration and that we are at the decision-making table because we are the ones that are most impacted by decisions at City Hall. Thank you so much, vote Jessica Guerrero for District 3. Gracias. Councilwoman Rebecca Villagran. Yes, Ms. Mora. Yes to the first question, yes to the second question, and yes to the third question. Thank you. We have, you have 30 seconds to elaborate. Good afternoon, buenas tardes. My name is Rebecca Villagran, a proud daughter of the South Side and member of St. Leo's Catholic Church. I wanna thank you all because I have been working against the status quo that was established so long ago. I am proud to have an open door and work closely with COPS Metro on our fight for 15 and continuing that work when it comes to our CDBG home funds to make sure no matter what the federal government's gonna try to do to CDBG, we at the city level can do great things. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Sister Consuelo uh, with Daughters of Charity and a Cox Metro leader from El Carmen and St. Bonaventure. And I am a, a voter and citizen of District 4. Will the uh, uh, candidate from District 4 please come forward? Mr. Saldana, please respond yes or no to the questions. To all three questions, the answer is yes. And you have 30 seconds to elaborate. Gracias y buenas tardes. I, um, let me start very quickly. Maybe you won't remember everything that I say up here, but just remember this. Uh, public service, when you become a, an elected official, it's about two things. It's remembering where you come from and who you work for. De donde vienes y por, por, por quien trabajas. And I'm from the south side. My father is from Mexico. He was an undocumented immigrant. I'm first generation, and I know who I work for and what I'm working for, which is people who haven't had a voice and haven't had a seat at the table. We got a seat at the table, and we're going to eat. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. I just want to. Uh, I just want to say that we had invited uh, Ray Guevara, another candidate for District Four, but uh, never heard back from him. My name is Adelaida Garcia, and I am from St. Alfonso's Church, District 5. I now invite the candidates from District 5, 5 to keep, please come forward. Ms. Shirley Gonzalez, we will begin with you. Please answer the question, the questions before you. Yes, yes, and yes. You have 30 seconds to elaborate. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Shirley Gonzalez. I'm the councilwoman for District 5. I've been serving you for four years. I'm looking forward to serving you for two more years. Since I've been on council, the three questions that were asked specifically were gre greatly supported by the existing council members and myself. We were able to push many of these initiatives forward, and we, we look forward to continuing to work with you on all these. And if I don't, I'm sure Sister Gabriela will let me know. So, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Montes. Please answer the three questions. Yes, yes, and yes to all of these common sense measures. Thank you. Please elaborate. You have 30 seconds. Thank you all for having me this afternoon. My name is Richard Montes. I am a proud graduate of Sydney Lanier High School, home of the West Side. Pride of the West Side and St. Mary's University. I kicked off this campaign to begin to have a broader conversation about progress. For far too long, our communities have been neglected and we've let our council people get away with just doing the minimum. Our campaign is about starting a broader conversation about progress. Let's talk about multi-generational poverty. Let's talk about dignified housing. Let's talk about empowering our youth and our seniors, not during elections, but 365 days a year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Monte. My name is Deborah Budd, and I'm a member of the First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Antonio. I live in District 6, and I now invite candidates from District 6 to step forward. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Ms. Gabriel Harvda. Okay. 
Now you have 30, oh, please answer yes or no yes, to each question. Um, to each question I say yes, absolutely. Okay, and now you have 30 <laughs> seconds to elaborate. Okay. I'm really proud to say that I grew up in District 6. I grew up in an older neighborhood. As I walk through the streets of District 6 trying to talk to people about my message, I'm, answer, I'm knocking on doors, say, in Edgewood, and they have, they have buckets behind them because there's water dripping behind them. Owner-occupied rehab is one of my number one priorities. They don't want to sell to luxury developers. I am from District 6. I will work for the people of District 6. Thank you. Mr. Trevino? Uh, yes to all questions. Okay, now you have 30 seconds to elaborate. Thank you so much. I'm so proud to be speaking in front of Cops Metro. I've been speaking about cops since the beginning of this campaign. Ernie Cortez and you are the example of the type of community change we need to make this city represent working people and not the 1%. From the beginning of this campaign until now, I've been talking about a living wage in not just the public sector, but the private sector too. It's up to these people up here to make that happen. When we come together, Everything is possible, Both we need, if you work 40 hours a week, you should not live in poverty. Vote Rick Trevino if you want authentic change. Thank you. I'm Mike Phillips with the First Unitarian Universalist Church, and I'm a resident of District 7. Can I have the candidates for District 7 step forward? Um, please note, Councilman Medina was invited, and he agreed to attend, but he's not here. Ms. Sandoval, how do you respond to the questions? Yes to all questions. You now have 30 seconds to elaborate. Buenas tardes, yo soy Ana Sandoval. Yo crecí en el distrito número 7, pero nací en Monterrey, Nuevo León. Mi familia se mudó a Estados Unidos cuando yo era una, arriba al norte, cuando yo era una bebita. Eh, ahí crecí y veo que hoy día aún tenemos los mismos problemas que teníamos cuando yo era chiquita. No hay banquetas. Tenemos diluvios. Eh, yo voy a transformar al inglés. Uh, I want to make sure that the people in District 7 have a voice at City Hall. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alan Chase. I'm from the First Unitarian Universalist Church of San Antonio. And I live in District 8. And I'll invite the District 8 candidate to step forward, please. Mr. Valdiva, please respond yes or no to the three questions. Yes, uh, I'm going to say yes. So, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yes to all of them. I have 30 seconds to elaborate. Sure. My name is Tony Valdivia. I'm a candidate for District 8. Let me tell you who I am. I'm a Christian. I'm a husband. I'm a father. I'm a businessman, but most importantly, I'm a volunteer. And I congratulate each of you for being here today, because this is what it's about. It's about being involved and looking out for one each other, looking to the person on the left of you and to the person on the right of you and saying, you know what, I have your back. And once we start doing that, we can tackle the true problems that, that we face here around poverty and crime and safety. So please remember to vote Tony Valdivia for District 8. Thank you. I'd like to add that we invited uh, Mrs. Brim and Mr. Plez, and neither came today. Isn't this great? I mean, when you look around, isn't this just really exciting and great? Um, I really wish that Mayor Taylor were here to see this awesome crowd and how involved and excited you are. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of pictures of the crowd. If y'all don't mind, give me one second. Take this side, and I'm going to email this to her. And if you all would like to take pictures before you leave today, you could do the same thing. And we'll email it to info at voteivy.com. We'll have someone write that on the board over here so that you'll all have the email address. If you're tech savvy and you want to tweet it, it's at Ivy Taylor, at Ivy R. Taylor, excuse me. And so now we invite Sister Jane Ann Slater, CDP, to give her reaction. Good afternoon. Is this working? Can you hear me? All right. We have just participated in a very important step of our responsibilities as, as citizens of our city of San Antonio. 
We have articulated our issues and we have called the candidates to respond in the affirmative or if they were so brave enough in the negative to these issues. So we've done the first step. We have addressed issues of a housing that's not only safe but respectable and that people can live in dignity. We've addressed issues of a, of a just wage, a wage that people can live in dignity and in, and in safety. And we have addressed the issues that our immigrants face when they cannot get IDs or they cannot get legal, their legal concerns taken care of. So we've done the first step, but we're not finished. We need to get out and vote. Not only do we need to get out and vote, yes, let's hear it. We, we need to get our family members, our church members, our neighbors, our friends, we need to get them up and out to the polls. And, and voting begins tomorrow, early voting begins tomorrow, and we have until May the 6th. So please think about the responsibility that you have, that I have, for one another, because human dignity, human rights are lived out in community, with the support of community, and we are the community, and we need to support one another and our, all of us it, for the best lives that we can have, for human dignity and human rights. So, viva la uh, ciudad de San Antonio! Viva! Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chancellor Slater. We neglected, thank you, Sister Jenan. We neglected to acknowledge Andy Sarabia, the first president of COPS who was here today. Yay, Andy! and Sister Christine Stevens from the Industrial Areas Foundation, the mother of COPS Metro. Thank you, Sister. Okay, we have come to the most important part of the afternoon. Before we adjourn, we must organize ourselves to get out the vote. You have heard the issues. You know where the candidates stand. You, you see who is here and who is not. You must go and vote and use today to help you decide who you will vote for. That's a good question. Even if you cannot vote, you know people who can. Everyone. Let's commit to get our family, friends, neighbors, and parishioners and make sure they know what happened today and that they vote. Ahora ya conocen los asuntos. Saben cuáles candidatos apoyan a nuestra agenda y saben cuáles candidatos están aquí y cuáles no. Así ahora tenemos que sacar el voto. Si estás registrado para votar, necesitas votar. Y si no puedes votar, conoces a alguien que sí puede votar. Necesitamos que comprometernos a sacar esas personas a votar. You have a commitment card. Take a moment to fill it out right now. Write down the information on the first half, check that you will vote, and then commit to get 30 people from your church and family to go out and vote. Do you know 30 people? 20? 10? I want you to think about who in your church, parents from CCD, family, friends, and neighbors, you can ask to get out to vote and put that number there. But remember, we never tell anyone to vote for a particular candidate. We will tell them where the candidates stand on the issues and hold them accountable to vote. Now, when you are done, pass that 
taper over to the middle part of the, of the aisle and the floor team will pick those up. Please hold up those forms when you're done. Once you complete it, please pass it on. If you commit to vote and or to get others to vote in this election, stand up and be recognized. Stand up. Stand up and get those votes out. Hold those cards up high for us. Now we invite Superintendent Serp from Dominion Church of God in Christ to offer the closing prayer. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this event, representing the Community of Churches of Social Action. Dr. Jerry Daly is our chairman. God bless you, um, Dr. Daly. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to pray for our community, to pray for our city. I want to pray for all of our leaders and these individuals that are running for office. We pray that they will be people of integrity and wisdom and that they will acknowledge you in all their ways so that you would give them the direction that we need for our city. Bless every family that's represented here today. Bless their children and their children's children. As we leave this place, oh Father, I pray for your safety and protection over everyone that's here today. Now unto you, God, we thank you for doing exceeding and abundantly above all that we can even ask or think according to the power that's working in us. Unto you be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Thank God. Amen. Candidates and guests, thank you for attending. Candidates, Mr. Phillips will now escort you out. Leaders, please stay seated for an evaluation. Please, please continue to fill out your cards and raise them high so that we can collect them and don't forget to vote. This meeting is adjourned. Don't forget to give us your cards. We need cards from everyone here. Our Lady of Guadalupe, thank you. <laughs> if you have your card, please raise it up high so that we can collect it. Leaders, please stay for an evaluation. We will start in 10 minutes. Leaders, stay for an evaluation. 